Today I'm going to tell you how this world is going to end with their AI, artificial intelligence with men and China and their little silicon robotic dolls. How it's all going to end. I'm going to let you know. And uh, it starts out with darkness. In Revelations chapter 6 tells us the next event that happens on God's calendar. And it says in verse 12, it says, The sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. But let's focus on the first part. The sun becoming black as sackcloth of hair. If it becomes that black, how is it going to shine forth light? It becomes dark. That part of the universe where the sun is becomes dark, and that would include planet Earth. We become dark. And that day, you're going to want electricity working, but there'll be no solar in order to run it. Our great czar, our great Caesar in the White House, had done away with a lot of our gas, and he's going to go solar. He thinks he's solar, these rent windmills and these solar panels are just going to be enough electricity to go around, but not when the day becomes dark. It just will not work. Darkness shall permeate the land, and people will be glad that they bought a lot of flashlights because it'll be so dark. No more lights of Las Vegas, Sin City, no longer shining all its glamorous lights. No city landscape as you once knew it. Everything will be going dark. And that's because the future will depend upon a lot of solar. Solar energy, and we won't have it. Now the next sign that the world is coming to an end, that this is the moment that's been prophesied by the word of God, by prophets of God, by John the Revelator. When that happens, everybody will know this is the re fulfillment of the sixth seal. And what is that? The moon becomes as blood. Now, I'm not sure how that's going to happen, but it's going to happen. And even though it's dark, the moon will radiate its blood. It's a time of blood. It's a time of judgment. It's a time that it's too late. Too late for the poor souls of this planet Earth to get right with God and to trust the beloved Son, Jesus Christ. It's just too late. The red light came on. Danger is now imminent. If there is a short period of time, I pray for you that there is. Maybe you could call on Jesus, but I'm not too sure. I think when that red light, the moon becoming red, all things stop, just like a stop sign. It stops. You should stop. You should stop and think about your life and think about how many times the Holy Spirit came to you and said, Trust in Jesus, the Lord Almighty. And you said, No, I have nothing to do with him. And God recorded that. And he has left you alone. But now... When that darkness comes, you'll be alone. And it may be too late for many of you to call on the name of Jesus. And that's all it took. A call, a simple call, but you didn't make it. You didn't do it. And then in that day, many will be sitting and wondering, what's this darkness all about? What's this darkness all about? And all of a sudden, the communications will be stopped. There'll be no communicating in that day with your cell phone that shoots up to the satellite or to the cell towers and into the satellite or however it's done, it won't happen. You'll be alone with no communication, no television to turn on. You'll be in complete darkness and everything will stop.
It'll stop working, and you'll stop. That's right. You might be comfortable. You can deal with a little darkness. The lights always came on in the past. Why won't they come on now? After an hour or so, you'll be thinking, where are the lights? We want the light. Or if it's in the winter, we're cold. We're getting cold. When's that warmth coming? Or if it's in the summer, how come my air conditioning is not working? I know it's dark, the power is out, but why is not my air conditioning working? And my refrigerator is starting, starting to melt. Everything in it is getting spoiled. Yeah, these trivial things will go through your mind, but then you'll realize you'll start to hear something, a rumble, a rumble, a loud rumble, then the earth will shake. And I'm gonna tell you what happens when the earth shakes. When you hear the rumble, the earth will shake and that will destroy the infrastructure of the earth. Now everything that men have relied on to give them joy in life, joy in their AI, joy in their robotic sex dolls, joy in their sexual porn, that's right, pornography, and then for others, their sex slaves and exploitation of little children. God says that's enough, that's enough, stop it, and the world will stop. There'll be women in that day having their abortions when the doctors in that critical procedure of killing life, late-term abortions that many don't even care about anymore. When that happens, when the lights go out and the earth trembles, their hand will slip. And many of the women having abortion in that day will die. They'll die under the hand and the judgment of God. There'll be no mercy in that day because they have no faith in Jesus Christ. It'll just be judgment and death. The moon will bear forth the blood that's coming on the earth. And it's going to be a bloody mess when the world, when the infrastructure caves in on each other. And there'll be rubble everywhere. Scream! crying save us save us but then it will be too late it's a horrible picture but one that must be told it's coming and I believe it's coming very soon now many have the fear of being buried alive that's one fear that they have is to be entombed in some sarcophagus and to be alive, clawing, clawing, trying to get out from their tombs of fallen debris. They're afraid of being left alone in a tight, cramped up space. And that's how it's going to be for many of the earth. In that day of the quake, they'll be under rubble. They'll be waiting to hear the barkings of dogs finding them beneath the rubble, but they will not come. They'll be waiting to see a flash of light of somebody caring enough to unbury them beneath the building and the rubble, but the people, their saviors, will not come. It is a total world earthquake, a global earthquake that covers the vast amount of land of the world. And many, many will perish from starvation, from thirst. But you know, the worst part of the whole thing of being buried alive is what comes next in Revelation 6. Do you want to hear more? Do you want me to tell you more? 
when people are clawing, trying to dig their way out of their tombs as they are buried alive with no hope. They're clawing, they're clawing, they're trying to get out, they're digging, they're removing rocks from underneath the rubble. Some are just so panned that their legs are exploding with pressure, they can't take it anymore. And then they'll hear the sound from heaven. No, it's not a sound of rescue. It's the sound of the stars of heaven falling under the earth, pelting the earth one after another. Boom! 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 The earth will shake again under this pelting, and there'll be fire and brimstone like you've never seen before. The earth will just go up in a flame of fire. But there'll be a remnant say, but we'll talk about that later. The stars, it says in the Bible, fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Fell unto the earth. No, it didn't fall past the earth. It didn't go past. It actually targeted the earth. It fell under the earth. It'll be such a cataclysmic event that those that think they survived the quake will then be pelted from the stars falling onto the earth. That is what the future, I believe, holds for this generation. I believe it's the terminal generation. It's the one that's going, those that survive will be going through the tribulation time. But will you survive seal Revelation 6, seal 6? Will you survive it? If you are one of the few, you won't be lucky to have survived it. But at least you won't be in hell. Maybe. Maybe you'll be one of those that won't take the mark of the beast. that will put your trust in the coming Savior. Maybe. Maybe you'll be spared. That's up to you and God. Now, John the Baptist, he came baptizing in water, and he came to declare the one to whom the Spirit will descend upon as the Savior of the world. He was to declare him. He was to go before the Mighty One, Jesus Christ. And Jesus did come. The Spirit did descend upon him. And John the Baptist said, This is him whom I'm not worthy to untie the shoe laces of his feet, of his sandals. I'm not worthy, but he is worthy. And Jesus had already come. He already came and he died for your sins on that cross. He was buried and in three days he rose from the dead victorious. And he offers many today with his outstretched arms, with the nail-pierced hands, he offers them eternal life by his blood that he shed on Calvary. He offers them, he extends his arms in love, but if he refuses love, there's nothing left. There's nothing left but the coming wrath of God. And God has anointed me to come to preach this word to you today. And you better take heed. I am not just a scaremonger. I am on a mission for Jesus Christ. And you must get saved. You must do it today. You must run from the wrath of God that is coming. Read the end part of Revelation 6, if you don't believe me. Read that. Where it says, for the great day of his wrath is come, and it's coming. I'm here to declare the coming of the wrath of God. But before that, I am here to declare the salvation of Jesus Christ. He called his apostles. He called his disciples to go forth and to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. And we're in that age of grace right now. Even though the world is horrible and dark. 
It looks like a ripened fruit for the wrath of God. There is hope. There is mercy. And you can have joy in Jesus Christ. Trust him. Call out to him. Don't be negligent of not calling for God to save you. He hears. He sees all. He wants to have mercy. He wants to have grace. Now, your prayer should be one like this. Dear God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I trust in Jesus. I trust in the one who died for me. I trust in the one who lives for me and can give me eternal life. I trust in him. I believe in you, O oh God. Thank you for your salvation. A simple prayer like that. If you're not good with words, just say, God, save me. Just call out to the Lord Almighty and he'll save you. He doesn't lie. He that believeth on him shall live. That's the gospel message. Well, that was a very somber message I gave today. I hope many who don't know Jesus Christ will just trust him, embrace him. He is alive forevermore, and he's attentive to your life. And he wants you to be saved. He wants you to do it today before this great time of wrath comes. It's coming. I believe it's very near. Like I said in the video, the world is ripe. Ripe for judgment. Trust in Jesus today. And those saints of God that pray for me, you know, just thank you. Thank you for watching the video. We're together in this. And like I always say, give a thumbs up to this video and let it permeate the society that we live in. The YouTube watchers, may they supernaturally be attuned to this video. It's an urgent message. But, you know, even if I get five people, that's about the same amount that Noah got when he preached in his day and age. And that'll be worth it. To reach one soul for Jesus will be worth it. And sometimes it's only a matter of a thumbs up. It really uh, fakes out those algorithms. They wonder, I wonder, are people really watching this thing? I guess we'll show it to more people. These AI are stupid. And we're better than any AI. And we can defeat them at their own ga game by giving a thumbs up. See you later. Bye.